All right, welcome folks. I want to give another example of using group actions to count the number of symmetries of a, of a nice object. So let G be the group of rotational symmetries of a soccer ball as drawn here. What's the size of this? How many different rotations can we do on the soccer ball that then map the stitching pattern back onto itself? Okay, so we're trying to map all of the patches and the stitches back to themselves. Black patches go to black patches, white patches go to white, white patches. So we're going to give two different answers, two different ways of counting, counting this. We're either going to think of the rotational rotations as acting on the 12 pentagons, or alternatively, later, acting on the 20 hexagons. But let's start first with the 12 pentagons. So here are the 12 pentagons. You know, in this view, you can only see some of them, but there's 12 in total. And we're going to use the pentagons, the action of these rotations on the pentagons, to count the number of rotational symmetries in total. So the size of this group is, pick your favorite pentagon and just how many ways can you map it to itself? So how many rotations um, are there that map pentagon one to itself? So pick any pentagon, call it your favorite pentagon, pentagon one. How many rotations map pentagon one to itself? Well, there's uh, five different rotations, right? Because I could sort of spin around here, you know, five different steps before I get back to where I started. So this is gonna be five. What do I multiply that by? Well, I multiply that by the number of pentagons that pentagon one can get mapped to. And there's nothing restricting me from taking this pentagon to any other pentagon on the soccer ball. So that's 12. And it turns out that the number of rotational symmetries of the soccer ball is indeed 12 times five or 60. We only counted the size of this group of rotations, but it turns out to be isomorphic to A5, the alternating group on five elements. The size of A5 is the size of S5, which is five factorial divided by two. And five factorial is 120. And if you divide that by two, you get 60. Okay, so we're gonna count this a different way. We're gonna instead think of these rotations as acting on the hexagons. We're gonna get 60, okay? There's gonna be 60 um, rotations. Again, when we think of the rotations of the soccer ball as acting on the hexagons instead of the pentagons. I'm going to get the wrong answer intentionally at first, and you have to figure out where I made a mistake. So answer two, let G be the group of rotational symmetries of a soccer ball. What's the size of this group? Instead, let's view each rotation as a permutation of the 20 hexagons. So there are 20 different hexagons on a soccer ball. Here I've drawn just hexagon one, but in total you have 20 of these hexagons. Okay. So the size of the group is, it's a product of two numbers. The number of rotations um, fixing hexagon one meaning mapping hexagon one to itself times the number of hexagons that hexagon one could be mapped to. All right. 
So this number here, how many hexagons could hexagon one be mapped to? Well, you could take hexagon one and map it to any of the other 20 hexagons by a rotation. So this should be 20. Here, what is the number of rotational symmetries that fix hexagon one? You might think that it's uh, six, right? Because there's six ways I could, I could rotate this hexagon around on itself. Okay. But 20 times six is 120. I've messed up somewhere. Does anyone have a, a guess where? You know, which, which one do you think is wrong, the 20 or the six? What is it? Is it both of them wrong or no? No, the 20 is right from this explanation. The six is wrong, however. So this six should instead be a three. And then we're going to get 20 times three, which is which is 60 again, which is the right answer. You know, the reason why this is three is I need to preserve the entire stitching pattern. OK, so sure. This particular hexagon, I could rotate it by just one sixth of the way around and it would get mapped onto itself. But it would mess up the rest of the stitching because if I rotate this just one sixth of the way around, it's mapping this black pentagon onto this white hexagon, right? The stitching's not getting mapped onto itself. You can't put this pentagon onto this hexagon without changing the stitching, right? So if I map only one sixth of the way around or only you know, three six of the way around, or only five six of the way around. You know, I, I don't preserve the stitching pattern. I have to map either zero six, or two six, or four six of the way around. Right. So I only have three different ways that I could rotate that fix this hexagon, um, because I could map. You know, I could rotate around like that, or I could rotate around like that or I could rotate the entire way around, which is just the same as, as doing nothing. So preserving the black and white patches, only three of the six rotations of this hexagon preserve those stitches. So in summary, we can think of the group of rotations of the soccer ball as acting either on the hexagons or the pentagons. When you try to count how many um, rotations you have, you get the right answer, 60 from either perspective. If you use the hexagons and you think of rotations as permuting hexagons, this turns out to be 20 times three to get your 60, because there's 20 different places each hexagon could go. And there's three rotations you can make around each hexagon that preserves the stitching. When you think of this as acting on the pentagons, you get six, you realize 60 is 12 times five. Any pentagon can go to any of the 12 other pentagons. And how many rotations are there fixing a single pentagon? Well, there's, there's all five of them. All right, so um, uh, in our next class, we'll state the orbit stabilizer theorem precisely, but that's what we're using here to count these groups of symmetries for the soccer ball example and, and in the prior videos for the cube, cube examples. Any public questions? Thanks so much.